everyone welcome back today we're looking at the gi joe mud fighter so the mud fighter was first released in the united states in 1989 and included the pilot dogfight the mud fighter was also available in 1990 and 1991 which unfortunately it was discontinued uh, the mud fighter was also available in 89 with a benny's exclusive special two pack with the hiss 2. All right, so we do have a nice picture of Mud Fighter, and he has a more classic, uh, say, World War II era look to him with the hat and the, the bomber jacket going. Um, let's see, Dog Fighter was released as part of the Eighth Series package exclusively with the Mud Fighter. It's also sold in 1990 and discontinued in 91. Uh, he was also simultaneously in Benny's. Uh, Exclusive with the Mud Fighter to Hiss 2, along with the Track Viper, which came with the Hiss 2. Uh, let's see, Dogfight is, is still piloted the Mud Fighter. Okay, so we do have some nice pictures here on yojo.com, which is where we always like to start our videos because they do give us some extra information and in that that we get to use for trying to come up with stats to bring it into our D6 universe. Um, having a nice front view and then side view. Now look at the amount of bombs. Now, you know, this is, in a lot of regards, to me, a more low-tech way of trying to do air support or, in this case, bombing, um, which is, in some regards, funny because it is actually being done a little bit today with a different plane all in all. Uh, so this has got two Gatling guns here. Um, you know, it, in traditional Hasbro GI Joe fashion, we always get to have more and more and more. Uh, I think if you just had the one Gatling gun, you would be fine. But in our universe, because we're taking more of the, uh, uh cartoon, not the comic book. You know, they're just laser cannons, so it's not like we have to worry about the extra ammo or anything else, which gets to be a bigger kind of issue with a lot of the aircraft. Uh, during World War II, I think they had said they had, in all, roughly about five seconds worth of ammo. Um, unlike when we play video games or whatever else today, where, you know, we can just hold that trigger down and try and dogfight and get walk, walk our shot right onto something, they really did not have that availability for most planes. Now, when it came to bombers and all that, and you can always reload a 50 caliber, you know, that's a whole different story. But, you know, compared to what a plane can carry for its ammo in the wings, you know, that's where things kind of went the way they did. All right. Um, now, in the schematics here, as we get to those, they do list two different types of bombs. Now, I've got this only listed as one single type of bomb uh, because they look very similar to each other. I just figured, hey, you know what? We're just going to list this as one bomb. And we do have two Gatling guns in the front, so these are going to be laser cannons as we flip around here. Uh, the bombs are small and easily lost, unfortunately, for easily lost or broken pieces. Uh, the, the guns really are just molded into the plastic, so it's not like there's anything different there. Uh, and then, of course, we get to see them in the DIC, um, which I know I watched not that long ago, but for whatever reason, I just don't remember seeing them. But that doesn't mean a lot because, you know, when I'm watching stuff today, I get kind of distracted by other things, other conversations going on and all that. So as much as I, I wish I could say I could just you know, zone in on the TV or whatever. That just doesn't happen. All right. There's no variations known of this, at least listed. We have the Mud Fighter and then the Mud Fighter and Hiss dual pack here. Um, and really, that's the only thing that we have. Now, internationally, in the United Kingdom and other European countries, there was a different release with blue missiles. So... They wanted them a little bit more on the blue side instead of being that steel gray. Which, you know, it's a minor thing, but it is there. So, you know, something worth noting. All right. And then, let's see. 
It originally sold for $6.29. I do remember picking one of these up way, way long ago. Um, and I know it was more expensive than this, but there again, uh, I think this was a couple years after. Um, maybe I'm wrong. 89. No, I think I did pick it up back in 89. I think that I think it was brand new, but God, I remember having the, the you know, it's the whole crux. And I've said this a couple times. I remember having to save up for some of this stuff. And uh, the store that I got it from a Schultz's, which doesn't even exist anymore, but it, it, it's just the, you know, funny things of how time moves on. And unfortunately, you know, it doesn't stop for anyone. Okay, so then when we bring this into our G.I. Joe. Uh, you know, D6 universe. Uh, let's see. So we have the mud, mud fighter being at uh, a speeder scale, and I forgot to change the length. Um, again, now I usually grab things and I, I kind of change them, and I thought I had all this done, but apparently I was looking at things and I got again kind of pulled away here. All right, so let's try and get this corrected here. I wanted this to be roughly about 30 feet long. Whoops. Not 20, 30. Uh, 30 feet long. Uh, I know the meters are going to be off a little bit, so let's add another um, 8.5 meters, maybe, uh, roughly. Let's see. And we're going to take this, and because I have them all as one. Oops. Yeah. All right. There we go. Now that should be about right. Because uh, I had to look around here, and I think this is where I got tripped up a little bit because I was worried about the altitude because what I originally took this from had a different altitude or whatever else. Um, seeing it's here, uh, everything else should probably work out. So it's going to be a crew of one, no passengers. Cargo capacity is going to be about 45 kilograms and, of course, full coverage. Uh, we have an altitude range of about 20,000 feet, 6,100 meters. Uh, so that's going to be the same as like the Mamba helicopter. I figured this should be roughly about the same. Uh, maneuverability 3D. This is a little bit slower, um, you know, because I didn't really change as much as I thought I did. So I think I'm going to put this down a little bit more. We're going to put it down to a one. 1D plus 2. Um, all right. You know, it's going to be heavy. So I don't think it's going to have as much. I think you're going to be trying to, to fight with it because it's just going to be heavy. Uh, and that's that's my, my thought behind this. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments if you disagree. Or just simply, like I've said so many times, if this, you know, if I have stats that don't agree with something that you think and you're grabbing this stuff, change it for what you need it to be, by all means. Um, I'm not an expert. I, I'm trying to do this for fun. Uh, sometimes I'm rushing a little bit more because, you know, I'm trying to keep this going here. Um, mainly for, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to get this out on a timely basis so we always have this. Uh, and I'm, I've got other things in the works and, and so on and so forth. So it does change how we do things a little bit. Uh, so we do have the speed of 220 miles an hour or 360 kilometers per hour. Now, uh, I just changed the body strength to a 4D. I think because this is going to be slow and more of a tank killer, kind of trying to fit a the, the niche of a cheap, a10. So think of it in that regard, which the military is using, and I forget the actual designation, but it's a crop duster. They're using the crop duster that you can find so very often as a basis for a small, reliable air support craft. Um, and the fact that it's lightweight, but it's used to carrying a heavy load for all this, the pesticide or other uh you know, growth chemicals or whatever else, it actually has a high carry allowance so they can throw on a bunch of different stuff onto it and they've, you know, armored it up and all, 
everything else that you need it to be, including some pretty good cannons on there for ground support actions. Okay, and there again, it's a lower cost vehicle, which is where I'm taking this for an idea. This is a lower cost vehicle than a lot of our high end military vehicles. And we can throw this stuff on here and we can get it to work, you know, cheap and cheap and dirty, right? Kind of that philosophy. All right, so we do have the dual medium lasers, which should probably get increased on damage because there's two of them. So let's get that changed here to a 6D, and then um, we're going to do twin. Twin medium laser cannons, uh, starfighter scale, fire controls 2D, damage is 60. Now we have 16 anti vehicle bombs, speeder scale, fire controls 1D because it's a bomb. And then damage is going to be 5D for 20 foot radius. Now, uh, it was actually listed that this is going to be cluster bombs. So I think that would, you know, for every spot that a bomb is going to drop, that would be it. Now, I don't know how you would do it if you wanted to say you're just dropping all of them. So you just pick a line. Or if you wanted to say you're dropping one individually. However you want to do that. Um, but for every spot that a bomb would drop, you know, I would say do the damage for each separate bomb, maybe. Or if you wanted to multiply it, um, you know, you can kind of go from there. Seeing that, you know, take, taking it from the, the Star Wars universe, we don't have a lot of cluster bombing and stuff like that going on all that much. Um more of like dog fighting and everything else was done and for what george lucas had done originally it's just some of those things that just was not typically brought in uh now when we got to the sequel series uh they did have the bombers but i don't know if we really actually hit anything on that i don't think i have stats for that as of yet although Someone might have that, and I know a place that I would look for it, but I don't think we have that in here quite yet. So um, just trying to see if you did want to do a just bomb in a roll, you know, you might want to roll to say, hey, how many bombs hit wherever until you roll out where all the bombs dropped, okay? Uh, just kind of going from there. And then a 20-foot radius from each bomb at speed or scale. So, and the way I would normally do my radius is the first 20 feet is going to be at full damage. The second 20 feet is going to be at one die less. So we'll go 5D, 4D, 3D, you know, something like that because you're hitting an area. So uh, just keep that in mind and go from there. But, you know, it's a nasty little fighter. Uh, like I said, my thought is this would be a... A cheaper, less expensive fighter. Uh, you look at the landing gear and all that. Now, I don't, like I said, I don't remember them having this in the cartoon. And I know I have the DIC uh, series. I just don't like seeing it how they say it because it sounds like it might be a something else. And I don't want YouTube being mad at me. Uh, I don't remember if the landing gear actually was supposed to fold up or not. But if it's a standard landing gear that just sits out all the time which cheapens it up even more. Uh, not trying to bash the fighter, but hey, if you can cut the cost, have a sturdy and reliable, inexpensive fighter for military use, why not? So with that, I know it's another shorter video, but I think we've, we've got this. Um, it's an interesting concept, if for nothing else. It is a very interesting concept. And with the different pods here, Something like this, you know, very easily could be used in a, in a different type of ground support, especially if under the wings, instead of having bombs there, if we actually had, uh, like, missile launchers or something like that. So you have, like, those packs where it's, you know, smaller missiles, you know, 
whether it's six or ten of them or whatever, typically the type that we would see on uh, helicopters, you know, that adds to a different variety of weaponry that we could use. So just throwing that out there, if this was ever done in a more real world. And I think that that, that is one of the systems that they do have on the uh, crop duster that they're, that they're kind of going to. Um, it's just the fact that it allows you that wide variety of things that you can do. So with that, thanks for stopping by. It's always wonderful to have you stop by and see the silliness that I get us into today. Hope you're having a wonderful day, and we'll see you in the next video.